Hi, Alex from LP Power here and welcome to the show where we discuss how to translate car technology from real life into Lego. Today we'll take a look at my favorite suspension type, the McPherson strut suspension. Here in the form of a Ford Fiesta setup. It is basically the same on all cars with McPherson's. What we see here is the lower A arm marked with a yellow arrow, the hub carrier which is somewhat hidden by the brake caliper, the drive shaft, the shock strut with top mounted spring and way back behind the drive shaft the steering link. When we look at it from behind we see the steering link better. Notice the absence of any upper wishbone or suspension arm. In LEGO this looks a little more like this. We have the same setup as we have seen in the Fiesta, recreated in LEGO here. The yellow spring strut mounts on top of the body with a ball joint and then to the hub carrier below. The kingpin axis goes then from the top of the spring through the lower ball joint. The drive shaft universal joint is not exactly in the kingpin axis in our example, but the difference is so small that I went ahead and made a front wheel drive setup anyway. It was just too tempting not to. Ideally, of course, the drive shaft CV joint should be on the kingpin axis. You can see here that the drive shafts swing just a bit when the wheels are steered, which is acceptable for our purposes. The lower part of the spring is mounted to the hub carrier rigidly. This is a crucial element that allows us to omit the upper wishbone. This also means the spring acts directly without any levers, which makes the suspension very responsive. The caster angle directly corresponds to the angle of the strut. When we watch all of the above in motion, we see how nicely it works. Here it is evident how narrow the chassis is. I made it intentionally as narrow as I could to show you the potential of the McPherson and how much room it leaves for things in the engine bay area. I also made a very simple transverse engine and differential setup to put things into perspective. With the particular spring setup that I chose, you can also see the potential of having the steering rack on top of the springs instead of down below on the wheel hub. This can get useful sometimes. When observing how the suspension works, we see that this time the camber angle of the wheel does change when only one side of the wheel gets, gets compressed. This is something that unequal length wishbones solved, but here we do not have that luxury. A small trade-off for simplicity. It's my favorite type of suspension because of its directness and compactness. When building a chassis, the other benefit is also that the lower wishbone is not pushed downwards because of the force of a spring that is attached to it, which allows us to make the suspension bridge smaller and lighter. And as I mentioned before, because there is no upper wishbone and the springs, or struts as they are called here, take over the role of the wishbone, it leaves more room between the wheels for engines and other stuff. I hope I have given you some fresh ideas for LEGO models. Next time, we'll look at some solid axle rear suspension designs and working leaf springs made out of LEGO. See you there!